and welcome to the SBP Podcast Mobile Filmmaking. I'm your host, Susie Botello, wishing you a very happy new year. You're listening to episode 92, the last episode of 2020. Here we are standing in a doorway. That's right, you and me. We're standing in this doorway. Behind us is that bridge, a bridge like no other, the one that we've crossed. And um, by now, we're probably a little tattered from the experience. We look back, you know, just to see where we've been, what we've gone through, what we've experienced. But we only do that for a brief moment. We feel different things. I mean, it's very hard to put everything we've felt into one word. Crazy may come to mind, but that does no justice to anything that we've experienced and what our friends have experienced and what many people have experienced as human beings all around the world. But now we're here. We're in this doorway, and we're standing here together, and we look at each other. We're not sure what to say, but we know we both sort of share the same feelings, right? Perhaps the first thought that comes to mind is, what's ahead? Well, we can be certain of one thing, a new year. A new year is standing there right before us, and we're going to take that big step. We're going to go forward. We're going to move forward. And we're not going to go back to the old ways because things have changed. And we've adapted to many things, and we've not adapted to others. And hopefully we've made the right choices in doing these things, the adapting. And we're ready to move forward together into a new year. And so I just wanted to take this moment and wish you all a very happy, peaceful, healthy, safe, and a just overall wonderful year. I know it's not going to happen overnight where magically everything is just instantly better. But we are going to make it better. So Happy New Year, everybody. I want to thank you, our guests, for listening to our podcast, subscribing. Um, One of the things that makes this podcast really special is when you go on social media and say, hey, I've been listening to, you know, this episode or I just listened to this and you share good things about it and you connect, connect with me, connect with the SBP podcast or me, Susie Botello. I love it. Uh, It makes a big world of difference. I also want to thank, oh, about a million guests (laughs) or so it feels. This is the 92nd uh, episode. I mean, it's unbelievable for me. Um, we started this in with our very first episode in October 2017, and here we are. Um, that's a lot of guests. Some have come in groups, and some have come individually as one-on-ones, and sometimes I've done some solo podcasts. But I really have enjoyed the conversations that I've had with so many of you. And so for every single guest that's ever been on this show, I want to say thank you for being a part of it and give yourselves a hand because you are part of this podcast that ironically, um, (laughs) well, I wouldn't say ironically, but somehow it has survived and continues to keep on rolling. And I will continue to do this because, well, in case you haven't noticed, I actually love doing this. So. Happy New Year again, Uh, but let's talk about our guests for this episode because, yes, this is not a solo episode. Our guests for this episode are two ambassadors whom we consider honorable ambassadors to SBP and the International Mobile Film Festival in San Diego. They've agreed to embark on this task of becoming judges for the next International Mobile Film Festival, which is actually going to be the 10th anniversary 
of the film festival event um, here in San Diego. And it's actually going to be 13 years from when we launched this. It's unbelievable. We're, are we like a teenager kind of maybe? We just entered that. But anyways, our two guests are very special. They are awesome, fun to chat with. And um, although they've been on this podcast before individually, this is the first time to have them here and to introduce you to them both together. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to talk about mobile filmmaking. We're going to talk about filmmaking. We're going to talk about horses and hobbits. Oh, oh, I was hoping to save that so that you wouldn't know who they are right off the bat. But all right, cat's out of the bag, right, guys? <laughs> Welcome, Jed Brophy and Mark Hadlow. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to the SBP podcast, mobile filmmaking. Well, we are heading out to New Zealand with our friends, uh, Jed Brophy and Mark Hadlow, who are ambassadors for the International Mobile Film Festival and are also judges for the film festival coming up in April. Hi, Jed. Hi, Mark. Hello, Susie. Hello, rest of the mobile filmmaking world. <laughs> Hello. Susie, hello, the entire world of mobile filmmaking. Whoa, what is it like to be here? I am very, very excited to have you both together here on the podcast. Um, it's been it's been a while. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, how long has it been? It's been at least a year, right? It has. It has, yeah. Yeah. I, um, I, it's been a year since we ate a pie in a bus shelter in Sydney. <laughs> 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 it's been a it's been a year since uh we've even um let me see the the film festival that we that we had it seems like it was a year ago but it was really just this last April. Yeah. And and Jed you were coming. Yeah, I mean you both planned on coming but Jed was confirmed to come over to San Diego for the film festival. I was. Um, yeah, and then we 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 were we may have been our film festival here in San Diego because uh, it was scheduled for uh, the end of April. We may have been one of the first, if not the first, uh, uh, mobile at least film festival to have to go virtual on the last minute. Yeah, you were COVIDed. Yeah, we were totally COVIDed, <laughs> um, and. Uh, thank God for you guys uh, willing to shift with me because that took a lot of it was quite a big diversion in, you know, into the plans and organizing it uh, for being a part of that anyways. Uh, you know, Mark went to the top of a mountain and <laughs> and recorded uh, something and Jed went out with um, with the horse. What was yeah. it, Seb? Seb, my horse Seb, yeah, he. Well, he actually demanded it. He said, I want to be a part of this. So <laughs> yeah, you, Susie, paddock. don't get me wrong here. We are not, mis you know, understating how much that horse controls Jed. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> he's my agent. He's my manager. He's uh, your he's everything. Just, he is. He's my everything. He's also beautiful. He is. Yeah. He is. I'm, and he's, he's got a guy. gorgeous setting with the yeah, green... You know, uh, well, he's got a great dad. Look at his he dad. For yeah. <laughs> it's true. He has, he has a good life. Yeah, definitely. Um, so uh, so you guys were going to do that. Thanks for, you know, what do they call it here? Rolling with the punches <laughs> on the film festival. Yeah, well, well, we, I mean, we, I just want to con congratulate you for actually keeping it going and, and managing good. to run a festival where all of those fabulous filmmakers got to actually show their work even yeah. in a virtual way so well done for for carrying on and, you, and getting it across the line you, Jeff. You, Jeff. 
Well, and, and you know what the cool part was that we still, you know, I didn't want to change the date. We always yeah. run our film festival at the very last weekend of April. And so we had all these little options like postpone it, uh, just do it a, a couple months later to give us time to do more. And I was like, oh, well, no, 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 no. It's going to stay on the same date. I'm, 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 you know, I guess I, I went to war with, with COVID and I feel like somehow we came out on top. So <laughs> you did, you did indeed. Yeah. But it, it was the, the filmmakers that had me glowing because they all showed up. I mean, they were different countries all over the world. Um, and they all showed up at the same time, you know, to view the films together and to be there to support one another. And that was just um, now that really touched my heart because they were um, a lot of them were disappointed. But some of the ones that couldn't come here to San Diego uh, were still a part of it that way. So so that was amazing. And yeah. and that included you guys, because I know you guys were. Uh, watching it too so thank you it was a pleasure absolute oh. pleasure okay. all right so um how excited are you guys about the judging now jed is um for listeners jed is going to be watching the the selected official the official selected films yeah. um for the all the shorts in the short film competition and Mark is going to be watching and judging, like Jed, but he is going to be the judging the films, the feature-length films. Yeah. Um, um, look, uh, either way, I would have been happy uh, how you would have picked it, Susie. And, um, but the thing is, um, about I, I speak for myself, but I, I, I hope you don't mind if I say something. Both of us uh, could have done either category. Um, the, the importance is that we are based in this um, in this in this industry, and I can assure you that I'm going to be so so excited about seeing what I'm going to see. I, I can't wait. I really can't wait. Yeah, yeah. Ditto for me. I'm the standard that I've seen so far in your film festival and across the world um, in terms of mobile content is amazing. It gets better every year as people. Yep learn about the technology and the technology gets better. And so I'm more than excited. I'm super yeah. hyped to see what Jed, people you, have to offer. Do you not feel that it's changing the building blocks a bit? Absolutely it is. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I like. Yeah. I think, I think the stories that, that the world is, is able to share more and more stories and get more creative with them because more people can be involved in the filmmaking process. Yeah. True. I, I think what we're seeing too is we're suddenly being exposed to other ethnicities. We're being exposed to other, uh, you know, the way other communities, the way other countries uh, talk to each other, the way they communicate with each other. And you see that through film. So in a way, film is a leader in the in in the development of our of their societies, and I'm always intrigued in other people's and other countries' societies. Um, just a generalisation there. I don't mean to um, uh, demean anything. I'm just saying it's so exciting to be exposed to other um, uh, filmmaking from a perspective of a country and their ethnicity. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, one of the things that attracts me, I'm, I'm, a, I'm more about storytelling in general, but what has led me to be so passionate about film is the fact that when you talk about the power of a story, right, you are limited, if you write it in a book, right, you're limiting your audience to people who can read it. Yeah. If you send it, through, uh, you know, just audio, right, in some way, like the, the radio and things like that, um, then you are limiting, you, there's, there's a second part of a human being when they're listening to something, which they have to visualize it. But with film, you are fulfilling all the senses of your audience. 
And all the audience has to do is hit play or just sit back and consume that wholeheartedly. They really get to dive in and 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 travel inside of the mind uh, and the vision of the storytelling as long as they can produce that somehow in the film. Yeah, true. And so the power of that story reaches more and more people around the world than it does in other mediums. That's that's how I feel. Well, I, I think what we're talking about too is something that was is being um, you know in the existence of humanity and the existence of people since the beginning of time. Storytellers, you know that you know we go right back to you know we can only can look at it from our perspective of writers like Shakespeare and and uh, and uh, all the great writers who who put down storytelling and. I, I, I what I like about mobile filmmaking is that there's the story has to be um, uh, paramount because we're not we're not we're not re- relying on huge money spent on green screen and you know special effects because uh, you know <laughs> so Blue Moon was important because of its story so that is very important to me storyline. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, when you have, as you say, a limited budget and you have limited time and you're shooting on something that has a pretty small scope in terms of the frame size, story has to hold it. The narrative has to be strong to hold your attention because it doesn't have all of the the special effects money behind it. It doesn't have, you know, all of the uh, motion capture and the green screen or the the LCD screen, the wraparound stuff that, that's happening on the big films or the budget to sell it. So if the story's not good, you're really up against it. And that's what I'm looking for when I'm watching films too, is very, very strong narrative. I just want to share a comment from Richard Taylor to me four days ago. I was lucky enough to catch up with him. He said that Blue Moon continues to haunt him, that he finds himself thinking about it a lot. And he has seen dozens and dozens of films since he saw that one. And he said he doesn't know what it is that captures his imagination about that film, except that it's about two people who have history and it's really, really interesting and it holds you. Um, You know, he'd never been a, he'd never been someone who'd gone out of his way to watch mobile films before, but he's a convert. So if we can convert someone like Richard Taylor, we've done a great job. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's, that's the whole thing that a story in itself shouldn't be guided by budgets and money and think that's, that's why, I'm so passionate about the mobile filmmaking process because you're basically, you really are empowering the stories themselves, like Mark was saying, with the phone. Because there is, you know, you go around the world, there's one thing that people have more than even a toothbrush is access to a mobile phone. And so you're really saying to everybody around the entire world, hey, if you If you want to make a film and you have a captivating story, you have just the same chance as anybody else, especially with social media and the world that we're living today, that you can really take a stand with your story, right? Let me me be also the devil's advocate here. Am I allowed to be? (laughs) Yes. Okay. Yes, I agree. The story, mobile filmmaking... It's the magic of the people involved too. Yeah. You have so got to be selective about the people involved. You really do. Because, you know, it's great to get out there and shoot with a mobile phone. It's fantastic. But you've also got to have the gravitas. You've got to have the integrity. You've also got to have that professionalism. And I don't mean that in, a, in, a, in, a, in an elitist way. I mean, you've got to know what your core uh, you know, the core function of everybody involved. Uh, am I being too judgmental? No, you, you really have to value your team. Yeah, totally. It's about the team. And I guess that's what, that's what Blue Moon was about. I knew exactly what I was getting involved with when I teamed up with Jed Brophy. I mean, oh, my God. Um, you know, if, if I didn't produce the goods, then Jed Brophy, that was it. And And then... <laughs> and I, 
luckily enough. Well, no, Jed, don't laugh. I, I'm serious. I had to come up with the goods because I was involving someone who's a very, very skilled and talented actor of yourself um, in, a, in a situation that you were, you know, this was new to you and you yeah. came at it 100 percent buddy and i you know i'll never forget that jed and that was an extraordinary experience I, it, cuts really... it cuts both ways mate we knew that we wanted to work together because we had yeah yeah um you told me it was a good script i believe you when i got the script it's one of the best scripts i've ever received in the mail it was really well written i could see it coming off the page in that location the really smart thing that we did, as you say, is we had really, we got lucky. We got an incredibly good sound guy. We got a very good cinematographer. We got a very good editor, as it turned out in the end. Steph kind of left us to do the acting stuff. He didn't yeah. ever push us to be faster. He didn't yeah. ever push us to change the pace. We yeah. explained to him that we were going to treat it like a theatre show and let it breathe and have its own organic nature. Yeah. And he trusted us to do that. Now, that doesn't happen very often on a film. Usually, and, and, and this is from my experience, usually quite often you're a puppet to the vision that the director has in terms of the pacing and all that kind of things. You've got to try and fit yourself into their preconceived idea or, or their vision. Yep. What happened here is you and I created a really good backstory. We got up early and we did our mahi. We did our rehearsal. Yep. Um, we, we created those characters so that when we walked on set, we can inhabit those characters from the moment the camera started rolling and follow that through to when the shot fell apart. So Mark, yeah, Mark's point about having professional people or people that have a bit of, have their chops is they can problem solve a lot of stuff that more inexperienced cast and crew can't. So, you know, don't be afraid to go after people who have a bit more experience in film or, or use your friends but just get yeah. a team that can gel together from the very beginning because if you don't, then you're up against it. You have yeah, to have yeah. everyone has to be on the same page and know what you're actually heading towards. And do you prep? Yeah. Hey, do you prep? Well, one of the things that I, you know, with the people that I've ever worked in with, with the films that I've worked on is that you develop these teams over time and new yeah. people come in and some leave right? The, the team, mm -hmm. but overall you're gaining experience together. You're learning from each other. And when you bring somebody new in that has worked in the professional industry or has had, like I worked on a film where guys that were doing the, the pyrotechnics and all that stuff had worked on, um, on the, the, the pirate movie with, um, <laughs> what Jeff. was that called? Yes. And, um, and I, I mean, it, it's, you get to have these conversations with them, you know, when, you know, off, you know, when you're not actually recording scenes and things like that, and you get to learn a lot from them. And, and they worked on other sets, too, that, that the same team was working on. And so you are learning with each other, and you find yourself working with the same people. And then the production is more seamless. And, and... But in order to get that, you have to have that professionalism, meaning an integrity. And integrity means that you have to be honest with each other. You have to carry yourself uh, and, and respect one another. And when you say, I'll be there at 3 a.m., you're there at 3 a.m. And people yeah, can no, count no, no. on you. You're, re you're there at 2.45 a.m. Oh, yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, so so that that's really cool. Now, now, Jed, you mentioned theaters, yeah. um, and I wanted to share a little bit with our listeners for that because I think part of the magic with Blue Moon has to do with theater. I know Mark and I have had this conversation before, but you both worked on theater for what, like thirty five or something. Yeah, yeah. Mark's been doing it for half a decade. I mean, half a half a century, um, on and off. Um, I've been doing it for a lot less, but, I, but there there is a there is a conception or a preconception that there is a different type of acting with theatre and film. They're actually they're actually exactly the same. God, I um, agree with you so much. That's absolutely yeah. God, yeah. No. It just, it comes down to it comes down to understanding the medium and the technology enough yeah. to be able to use that in a theatrical way to tell 
the story. You have to know the camera angles. You have to know how that makes you look and what you're trying to do yeah. with how you use the lens. But the acting part of it, the creating a character part of it, the inhabiting that organic space that happens between two or three or four characters, that magic is exactly the same. It's no different between the two mediums. That's a myth created by someone who couldn't do either, I imagine. Um, <laughs> so, we, but, but Mark and I yeah. saw this very clearly as a theatre piece. It, it, was, it was two people in a space that was locked down, basically. Yeah. Like, a theater, like a theatre show is, you're stuck in one room, and we were stuck in one room. That gives you an enormous amount of freedom to play with the space between people. And so we treated it like that, and it actually served the purpose of this film. It's not to say that that serves the purpose of every film, but for this one, it was absolutely perfect to treat it like that. And, and the step- really cool thing about it too, Mark, was that, you know, I wanted you to talk about this because in a theater, the audience is stuck looking at the wide shot, right? Yeah. yeah. And But with okay. a mobile phone, you know, it mm-hmm. really goes into you. Yeah. I, I think one of the uh, one of the interesting things about theatre is it's always in the moment. You cannot get away from that. You you can't um, actually retake. You can't actually stop. Or if you do, it's quite funny. If things go wrong, actually, the audience loves it because there's a vulnerability that comes with that that people understand. Um, and, and in a one man show, you can get away with it. But the thing about theatre is it's in the moment and. In the moment means there's a truth that comes with it. There's a, an integrity that comes with it. There's also a humour, uh, a serious, a tragedy, um, a comedy, whatever genre you want to put on it. It's in the moment. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how other to ex- explain it other than the fact that it's the truth of that moment. And yeah. people who are watching have seen that. And they're suddenly voyeurs to their own experience in their own life. Film can't do that um, because it's there. It's it's in three dimension and it's three dimensional, and it, it's really interesting. And so that's what really, from the perspective of how Jed and I worked on Blue Moon, we sort of worked on it uh, before we went to set. We could see it as a, a, a really in-the-moment uh, rehearsal that we then had to replay for the film. Uh, am I right? You know where I'm coming from, Jed, yeah? Absolutely, uh, and we were, we were lucky that we didn't have the time to do two or three takes. Yeah. So that, 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 that like a theatre piece, it was like we turned on the camera and then we just had to do it for the audience, yeah. like the audience was there sitting in seats watching us, knowing that we would be very lucky to ever turn around and do it twice. Um, And it gave us an enormous freedom just to play with the pacing. I mean, there's a a great sense of expectancy and um, tension created by the fact that we don't hurry any of these shots. We just let it have its own kind of pace. It's sat sat in the cradle organically in a very easy way because we're both quite good at doing theatre. We've done it for a long time. We understand how to let things have their own space. You have to do yeah. that in theatre to create this yeah. world that isn't real because, you know, it's an artifice that you're, you, you've got people sitting there watching something that you've created to tell a story. Film, if it doesn't work, you can go back and do take two. If you're Peter Jackson, you can take take 42. What we, say? Yeah, I mean, we just we simply couldn't do that. So we had to inhabit that space in a very real way. It couldn't just be like, mm-hmm. oh, I'll just cruise through this take and see how it goes. We had to be right in there from the beginning, yeah. like you are in theatre. There and there was a take, wasn't there? When yeah. you and I, the lines went askew, mm. we we just trusted each other and we pushed through it, wasn't yeah. there? It was, a, it was it, the take around. Uh, it, oh, it, was, it was incredible. It was, yeah. it, it was very uplifting, actually, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was a unique experience. And you're right, Susie, you talked about the phone being able to be that bird's eye view or getting right up in the face that an audience in theatre doesn't get. Having having our DOP right there, right next to us with this... Oh, the phone was amazing. Yeah, and it wasn't a very big object kind of right there. We got very used to it very quickly. 
but yeah. we're also aware enough mm-hmm. to be able to use it for camera angles, to be able to create menace, to be able to create com- compassion, confusion by knowing where the lens was at all time. Yeah. Quite often with those big cameras, you'll have three or four people around it. It's very hard to concentrate. Yeah, You, can't, you quite often can't even see their other actor. They're giving no. you an eye line, but they're not giving you their eyes. They're not giving you the gateway to the soul. That, that that was that was all there for us. It was a it was um we found it liberating. Well, I found it liberating. I, I, I it. would imagine so because you are able to stay in character and and the role that you're playing, especially in this film where there was so much dialogue, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it was like I don't know. I I I I don't quite know how to describe it. Even when we stopped rolling afterwards, you know, I'd look at Jed. I, I don't know how Jed feels about this, but I look. I would look at Jed, and there was just a blink of an eye where both of us didn't have to say anything, but we knew that it was absolutely bang on. Am, am I right, Jed? Yeah, totally. And it was like there was no like, wow, how did you feel that went? There was no sort of like, you know, like like pat each other's backs. It was like sort of we just sort of just inhabited it, and that. I think is part of the, the 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 presence where you have to be is when you just totally trust the other person you're with. There's a, just a feeling. There's just a, a, a I don't know an atmosphere where you are totally involved in what you're doing and you just go through it and you deal with it and whatever happens happens. And we were lucky enough in what happened was sensational. It was yeah. extraordinary. It all starts with the script. The script allowed us yeah. to do that because we... Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mark came up with this great idea to break the script down into sections, knowing Beats. that we were going to shoot in order. We, we, yeah, beats. We were able to shoot in order, which gave us an enormous amount of pre-production, if you like, in terms of our coming to the process. We yeah. would rehearse just that section. And yeah. we said to Steph, we, we had a conversation every, every night before we shot, um, in the cafe, which was feeding us before we went on set about what we were going to try and do. Oh, oh, oh. And, we, and we would talk to the DAP and say, if you start me in a single and I walk you into the two shot, we can hold that in this position. But when I do this thing where I chuck that thing down on the floor, I'm about to move. So we were able to also do a lot of their work for them by the fact that we'd done the rehearsal during the day in our own time. Yeah. And talk Ryan, about Ryan, Ryan was very perceptive, wasn't he? He was. Um, he Ryan uh, Ryan O'Rourke was incredibly perceptive um, with regards to where we were moving. Sorry to interrupt, Jay. No, we, we didn't have the because we didn't have time to rehearse every scene. Um, we kind of knew where the last bit had ended, so we knew we were starting the scene, and then we were just kind of free flow it. Um, wow. Yeah. We well, were. Lucky. That's incredible, considering how well your performance was and how key it was. Well, we knew we we knew where we came from. I know Jed's background. Jed knows my background, but there's also that 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 core background of theatre, and Jed's background first and foremost. Even though he does a lot of a lot of film, is theatre, and so is mine. Yeah. And if, if, if we're and, and we're approaching it straight away. So we're we're on a winning. We're on a we're on an even keel straight away. Would I be right, Jeddy? Yeah, quite right. Yeah, we, we know that things happen in theatre that are different from what you rehearse because there's magic that happens and things not quite going right, but there's also magic in just trying something a different way. There's a scene where I slap Mark. I never told Mark I was going to do that. It just felt right for my character to do that in the moment. Now, usually in a film, you would have a rehearsal and I'd do that and I'd say, I'm going to slap you at this point. But then he knows it's coming. It's not a real reaction because he knows it's coming. And yeah. he's, there's always going to be a bit of flinch, but there's also just not the realism that you get when stuff happens because it's in the moment. That, I think yeah. that's what we're trying to say about it being more organic when you don't over-rehearse things. It really lent itself to these two characters, having not seen each other for 40 years, being in a room together and trying to suss each other out. It's a bit like what we were doing as two actors, if you like. Um, it just it helped us it helped us in this process with this particular film. Wouldn't work for everything, but it worked for us. Speaking of not working each other um, with each other or seeing each other for a while, um, I just you know I'm a big fan of the the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings. 
Um, and I know there's this one story that you guys shared uh, before about um, how you guys found out that you were cast in The Hobbit. Yeah. Um, can you share that with me? Because I, I haven't heard it enough times. 50 times <laughs> is not enough for me. It's just the airport thing. Yeah. 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 I, I knew I knew that Mark had been cast because I'd seen his photo up on the wall at Weta. Um And I don't know. I think he knew that I'd been I cast had, too. No, you I were, hadn't I'd seen yours. I had not yeah. seen yours. So you, you were flying into Wellington and I was flying out of Wellington. And we saw yeah. each other at the airport. And I saw Mark from across the whole distance of Wellington Airport <laughs> underneath the giant eagles that are there yeah. in the Middle Earth Airport in Wellington. And he just had this beaming grin on his face yeah. and uh, and he saw the beaming grin on my face and we met halfway and I said mate congratulations so I hear that you're uh, you're doing the Hobbit and he says yes are you and I said yes I am and we had that moment together where we that's how we sort of found out wasn't it yeah yeah and it was um, and I think that was at that point there right there and then it was the start of something that I think is even going to be even more beneficial uh, and um, a, a start of uh, a, a relationship from the perspective professionally that Jed and I are going to um, do some amazing stuff. I just love your work and I love what we do and I know that you've got something happening at the moment and um, I, I, yeah. I can't do we do what we do. I, do. I just love working with you, buddy. You too, um, mate. Yeah, we've, we've, we've got a project we want to, we're trying to work on together, actually, that we're going to produce together, along with Shane Rangi, oh. um, uh, director producer of Die Like a Shark, and he's just won another acting award. We, we sort of don't yeah. want to wait around for anyone else to give us the opportunity. We're going, to make, we're going to make stuff happen on our own. Awesome. Now, hey, you know, when, when, when you recorded your, uh, your piece for the film festival uh, this year, um, you spoke about a screenplay, Jed, that you were writing. Yeah. And uh, a Western. Yeah. Um, you were planning on shooting that, I think, with a phone, right? I, I think it's a challenge to shoot a Western on a phone. One of the things that sells Westerns is that large landscape, that yeah. kind of widescreen. But with the Moondog anamorphic lens shooting that kind of 4K widescreen, I actually think, I think it might lend itself to being a really hyper-real Western where you can get really up close with the people on horseback having their own gimbal. Am I a, in that? With head? a phone, looking at each other. You know, you, you, skill up, you skill up your actors to also be DOPs. You can get a lot of interactive stuff between people that you don't see in Westerns. I, yeah. think, it's, I think it hasn't been done because people don't think it lends itself to that particular genre. I think they're wrong. I've, yeah. I've been watching with a friend of mine who I'm actually working on a screenplay, a Western screenplay with, we've been watching what are considered the top 20 Western films of all time. And they're very, very, they're, it's a great genre in terms of the close-up, in terms of getting right up in someone's face, the reaction shot. The Westerns are sold by reaction shots. What's happening between the, the white hat and the black hat a lot of the time? Um, and I think that, I think the technology has got to a point in mobile filmmaking that that idea that you can't shoot landscapes Mm -hmm. is is not true i think that yeah. you can shoot landscapes as good as you can on any really flash camera so the challenge for me is finding a group of people that want to take that on board you know finding people who believe in it enough to jump on and make that western happen you don't need a big crew you really don't need a big crew for a western it's a simple it's usually it's two or three the people story right it's yeah. still, still about story. the story it it's is. just a setting yeah it's and and yeah, I've cast you. I've cast you. There's a part for the back end of a horse, um, and I thought, I thought that wouldn't be the part I'd give you. <laughs> well, as long as you're the front end. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's a there's a guy that's dead in the first five minutes. Um, they just call him. I think his name is Flyblow, and I think I'm going to get you to play that guy. It's a really I, I see part. Mark. I see Mark as the uh, bartender at the saloon. The oh. There you go. Yeah. There that's you go. a date. Boot. It's not even half a day. <laughs> Hell. Um, Jed, um, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, Mark, uh, we were talking about the theater. You just finished or or you completed Pantomime. something, didn't you? Cinderella. Yeah, we finished it last night. So I drove up back up to Nelson today. 
Um, it was un unreal. It was fantastic. But what was mind blowing is the talent that's coming through in this next generation of actors. Yeah. Oh my. Uh, you've seen it, eh, Jack? I have. It's yeah. extraordinary. Um, oh, look, you know, I was just, I was so um, privileged to work with guys that are, that, that are just coming out of drama school, some guys that have been in it for about three or four or five years. They're doing it. They're, the talent is unbelievable. And you know what? This is all homegrown. They are all New Zealanders. They are all working hard. They've all been, had international careers. They've all been overseas. The guys that play the Ugly Sisters, uh, one of them has been on the West End. He's been doing other it, – it, incredible, incredible. Um, uh, just And it, boy, did it do well. We, I think they've done um, something like 85%. Um, and wow. what's lovely is New Zealanders and Christchurch people – have um, been exposed to some really top flight talent and entertainment and a production of Cinderella that is equal to anywhere else in the world. It's homegrown. Local oh. is vocal. There is no doubt about it. I mean, that's one of the advantages of, of COVID is that we've actually had to go back and um, look at what we have. And I mean, that was one of the things I wanted to do with Mammal when I got it straight out there after we had the lockdown, we got out there and Look, we're as good as anywhere else in the world. We don't need um, we don't need to be told how good we are. People work very hard in their careers. They work very hard um, to um, to you know carve a career out of this business, and it's just hard. And in New Zealand, it's even harder because it's so small. So I really, really clap my hands and top my hat to these young professionals who are coming through, they're just immeasurably talented. It's extraordinary. What, what, um, I know that Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit brought a lot of tourism there to, to Wellington and a lot of places there in New Zealand. Um, do you think that the film industry in New Zealand is interested in expanding that into, you know, uh, gathering more fame but for other films yeah i mean it already is there's there's a lot of stuff shooting here because we're literally the only country in the world that can actually shoot um <laughs> you know that can actually have crew working side by side without social distancing and you know we it's a very enviable place to be and we have a lot to thank our present government and our leader jacinda adern for oh, yeah. um, it's always been the kiwi way that we can get up and, and get stuff going pretty well um, internally but we also have the, some of the best crew for working on those big films in the world because we've done it we've done Narnia we've done Lord of the Rings we've done Avatar and they're still doing Avatar movies here we've worked with some of the biggest filmmakers in the world down here and our crew are second to none so I'm not sure if it's about the fame it's more about trying to attract people to come here because of the personnel rather than just the landscape um, Film tourism is the third biggest earner in this country in terms of tourists coming here to see the locations. I'd like to see it being more about the local so, content getting a chance to get those big budgets as well. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. And, and here's one thing. Um, I uh, Back when I started this, when I was looking at what an impact, or I, I shouldn't say impact, but one of the benefits of mobile filmmaking uh, as opposed to, you know, even independent filmmaking with big cameras and crews and things like that, is that it's so much better for the environment. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the things we, we during Blue Moon, I'm uh, sorry to keep harping back to it, but um, our shoot was extraordinarily environmentally friendly, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, it was, I couldn't believe it. We only had one. We had one cup of coffee between the whole crew the whole time. <laughs> we just shared it, and no, and there was, wasn't even a, a, a pie. Uh, no, <laughs> there wasn't. A, there wasn't even a pie. <laughs> but imagine, you know, I mean, I 
can't shoot like Lord of the Rings, you know, with a phone. But let's say that you're you're shooting an outdoor scene, right? I, I've mm. been to places where you've got, I mean, the 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 cables, right? They go yeah. on the generators are like thicker than my leg. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, just that laying the groundwork for that, and then the, the lights, the big lights, and the craft services, and the yeah. trailers, and all those things, and all those people trampling on on the land. We have yeah. to be. I guess we have to be a bit careful here because we don't want to um, cut the nose to spite the face. You no. know, the, the big films have made mobile films possible. You know what I mean. I don't mean that derogatorily. I no. mean that, that the fact that because of um, the ability for us to take, oh, how many was it uh, when we went on location, Jed, for, for a Hobbit? Oh, how many what? How many what? Vehicles. I mean, it was just oh, you know, like 200, when, 200 uh, vehicles. You know, like a thousand people went on, on location, wasn't it? A thousand people yeah. or something. I, yeah. I might, but, um, but it, you know, until we work out the the parameters and everything, we couldn't do what we do without the major perspective of, of where filmmaking came from. And we must always be aware of that. You know, we can't just um, say we can do our own thing because of, you know, because we're really good at it. Um, we're lucky. We're very, very lucky. And, you know, the, the Peter Jacksons and the Richard Taylors of this world that, that give us this opportunity to do things – also give us the ingenuity to get out there and do it ourselves. So, you know, it, there, there's you know, another thing began, here too. Yeah. Hey, Mark, I mean, if, when we get to work on those big films, we can afford to go and work on little films and not get paid. That, that's exactly you know, right. um, so that's that, right. that, Yeah. Yeah. Um, if it wasn't for the fact that, um, you know, we were, we were treated incredibly well and, and, and Warner Brothers and all the other studios treated us with respect and paid us, you know, they paid us for what for what we were worth and that allowed us to actually go away and do other work. And so the big part of the industry actually helps us in this country do the little part of the industry. And along with mobile films, there's also, you know, a lot of short films are made with crew in the weekend because they can afford to go and do it for free with filmmakers that don't have a budget to do it otherwise. So they do go hand in hand. But I, but I do take your point, Susie. It isn't the most environmentally friendly industry oh, no. in terms of what you have to mine, even to make, you know, even to make the cameras work. The lithium batteries, for instance, and the and the cobalt and the barium and all that stuff has to come from countries outside of New Zealand and the US. And and studios and in, in their own nature use a lot of money in the administration part of it. It's very top heavy. There's a lot of wastage in that kind of upper echelons, if you like. Um, but that's the beast. We have to it's have true. that beast. It's wouldn't, true. There, there wouldn't be the beast yeah. underneath it. There wouldn't be the layers and the tears underneath it without that beast um, rolling on. But if you had to be the earth, looking yeah. at it from her perspective, you'd say, okay, fine. Uh, yeah. Three big films in a year, fine, yeah. I'll take you. But yeah. then I'll also accept, you know, 50 little films. films. 50 films that, that that have a very small footprint. We had a very yes, small exactly. footprint. We, we're proud of that. We had a crew of seven, um, you know, four or five actors, one location. We stayed all together in an orchard, so there wasn't a whole lot of accommodation costs. The town was really good to us in the way that they all came out to help us. And so yes. we were able to be environmentally friendly on our shoot. Um, yeah. Yeah, I we worked like on a I worked on a film here, and we we did use several locations around San Diego, but mm -hmm. we had a we had a very small crew uh, for this little film because it was a it was a it, student it was a a student with uh, professional filmmakers helping the student make the film. Did you um, bike to each location? No, <laughs> can't do oh, that here. Good. Just this kidding. is America, the land of the freeways, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and people don't like it when I, this is why I go everywhere and I show up early because I like taking back roads as I can get from one end of San Diego to the next end of San Diego um, without touching a freeway. Um, wow. And I love driving that way. But of course it takes all day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it takes yeah. hours. 
but you can use the different locations. And we had, I think we had about 16 people uh, on the crew. And we yep. shot in the mountains. We shot, you know, in, in neighborhoods. And we shot in houses. We went all the way out to Julian. I don't know if you've heard of I Julian. Do. Yeah. Yeah. We, we shot some stuff up there. Um, and and the, 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 I, I keep thinking that if we would have been shooting on a mobile phone, it would have been so much easier because even though we were a small crew, you know, there was all the toys, you know what I mean? And we yeah. could have shot it on a mobile phone. Yeah. And, and just breaking stuff down, breaking down the set would have saved us a lot of time too. Well, guys, I want to talk a little bit here about, um, and, and just, uh, just the last few minutes. Um, I know we talked about, um, the, um, um, judging of the films. What I want to say to the listeners is that it's going to be quite a treat to know that your films are going to be viewed, whether you're in the short competition or in the feature film competition, which is why I split you guys up. Um, also, yeah. so you wouldn't collude with each other about the films. <laughs> True. No, fair enough, too. Oh, no, no, there won't be any, there won't be any. <laughs> no colluding. <laughs> he's um, like, he's this country's biggest colluder. Everyone knows that. Yeah. We're the colluder brothers. We're the colluder brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. I have to be able to speak so I can't laugh too hard. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I didn't mean to start anything, really. I didn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> Too late. But, <laughs> Too late. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, so it's going to be really cool. And just know that if your film is selected, that's part of the price. That may be the only... No, I'm just kidding. But that's <laughs> yeah. part of the price. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Who? People I, are like, what? <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have three words. Yes. Who's included in the in in the judging? Storyline, storyline, storyline. You bet. That's usually how the selection works too. <laughs> On storyline, but you know, there's, um, you know, with the feature films, are they're, they're like narrative films, but with yeah, the shorts, course. with the shorts or more, you get some experimental films as well. Excellent. I'm all about the experimental. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. He is. Trust me. I I know that. We shared <laughs> hotel. I'm sorry. Did I say that out loud? Oh my goodness. We said you said we would never, ever talk about that. It was one time. <laughs> one. I, I was in a bad place. I was in a bad place. Quit. Walk out. Walk out. Walk away. <laughs> Hey, I have a quick question. I know this is going to sound really random, but Jed, um, in 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 going back to your your idea of the Western um, yeah. and the mobile phone, and I and I and I really think part of this is about being really creative. You know, yeah. okay, I'm going to shoot it with the phone. This hasn't been done before um, yeah. in, to this caliber, so I got to get really creative. You had that idea of. Uh, the actors on their horses, you know, with gimbals <laughs> uh, yeah. shooting each other. Oh, how yeah. appropriate. Uh, yeah. Pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just thinking about this now with animals, horses, right? Yeah. How do you think they will accept a mobile phone camera as opposed to a traditional big camera easier or not? Because you've been around this and I'm not joking here. Um, yeah. Is there a difference? No, the, the thing is that you spend a lot of time with horses that end up on films desensitizing them to the cameras. The horse that I personally own, Seb, who you've met, he was one of the horses that was used right next door to the tracking vehicle on Lord of the Rings for those big gallops. So he he was right next to a big V8 vehicle going very fast with four cameras on it pointed at him. They get used to it. It's just my horse will even slide into shot so he gets closer and closer to the camera if you want him to. Um, so they do get used to it. They... Horses will get used to anything if you give them time and you treat them respectfully and make it a positive thing by reinforcing the positive rather than making it a negative experience. Um, but, yeah, they'll, they have saddles on them. They have people swinging stuff around them, their hats and whatever. Um, a, a, a mobile camera will actually be probably easier because it's less, it's less um, focus. It's a much smaller object. 
um, they, they're prey, so they have their eyes on the side of their head. So being able to see the camera will probably put them more at ease than kind of coming across it, um, you know, by accident. But, yeah, they Should. do. I mean, I've, I've galloped right next to a, a camera on a crane pointed right at the horse, and the horse just ignores it. They, they just get used to it. Susie, right. this is why I love this man, okay? This is why he is like a brother to me because he looked after me during The Hobbit when I was on a horse, and I'm not a horse rider at all. And uh, honestly, um, I just – this is why, why Jed Brophy is like a brother. I am your well, brother, what, Mark. What do you mean? I mean, I to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what do you mean he looked after you? Look, um, I was looked after by the horse master, but I always had a quiet word with Jed, didn't I, Jeddy? You did. I did. Just, I said, yeah. Jed, I'm good on horses. I'm not great. And Jed always had this, you know, and I got handed the shit horse, didn't I, Jeddy? You did. Yeah, they gave it to you on purpose because I wrote them a letter. Yeah. <laughs> said, please give Mark the donkey and he'll be fine. <laughs> um, what I'm what I'm what I'm saying is with I I was you know horses are very strange things and um and uh, to have someone like Jed who is there at your back who knows um what's going on um it makes such a difference when you're filming and that's another little tick in the box from the perspective of knowing the people that you work with, the people that you honor, the people that you respect and the people that you trust. And, um, it's true. I mean, this, I mean, seriously, Jed, you know, yeah. and we're not talking about something that this is something that is, is, you know, horse riding is not something that you should take lightly. Um, no. horse are their own thing and the respect that you must show any creature on this world, on, on this earth. But um, but I was very fortunate. We we all were very fortunate. We had Jed uh, on the hover. Thanks, Jed. Love you, Jed. Oh, I love you too, mate. And you know, it was, I was lucky that I'd done the whole Lord of the Rings on horseback, so I kind of knew what we were up for. And it is that thing. It's not. It's it'd be like me jumping into a Ferrari, and you know, wanting to spin its wheels or a Formula One car. It would take me a while to do that. It's it's not something you can do unless you've done it before. I was just very lucky that I'd grown up riding horses every day and that I'd had a, that experience working for the horse department and I knew instinctively what wasn't right for an actor on a horse. You can tell if a horse is about to do something. You can tell if they're about to jump out from underneath you. And so I was just able to sort of second guess it a wee bit and just say to people, hey, just relax. Just pretend that you're actually not on a horse. And mm -hmm. if you can just relax your body, the horse will relax as well. So, so in this Western that you're going to have, we're going to, have a scene. I'm already mm. helping you write this. You yeah. have a scene with Mark, the bartender, on a, on a horse, horse, doing a getaway, yeah. holding a gimbal in a... Yeah. Thing. At full gallop. <laughs> At absolute full gallop. It'll be fun until it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm serious, you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've already imagined where I can put that scene, actually. I would try it implicitly. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, listen, I know that Mark has to go somewhere. <laughs> I don't remember where, it, it, but I know I he said seen, earlier he I does. Have, I haven't seen my family in three weeks. Aww. This is the first time back. And, um, uh, but I just so wanted to do this with you, Susie, and with Jed. Um, yeah. And, um, I, I, so it's not a problem at all. But I do have to go and spend some time with my family. God. Yes, I can, I, I can sort of sense it. <laughs> you got to get going. <laughs> Um, and, uh, so listen, uh, one, one last word from each of you, Mark, you first, just, uh, a quick message to the mobile filmmakers, um, especially the ones who are going to be in our film festival that you're judging. Yep. Um, don't hold back. You have an instinct, follow it, believe in it and utterly produce it. Um, don't, um, but it must be about the story. Uh, and, and, uh, if you've got a story, then the proof will be in the pudding. And I, I, I'm so excited about looking forward to it. Uh, judging these films, uh, um, is a, 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 a privilege for me. Uh, but I can't wait. I'm so excited. Thank you. 
Okay, Jed. Yeah, so firstly, kia ora katoa to all of you. Um, kia kaha, be strong. It's been a very tough time, a very tough time to be making films. Community is everything at the moment. Um, and filmmaking is about community. It's about everybody having a positive interest in making the process and the product as much fun as possible. Always remember that. It is make-believe. And, and so it has, you can take the pressure off yourself by making it fun. It doesn't have to be angst-ridden. And Mark is right. Story is everything. The narrative has to make sense. Um, if you're making an experimental film, it still has to have a very strong through line, an arc that makes sense to the people watching it. If you have to explain a film before or after it, then you haven't really done your job. The film should stand alone and tell the story on its own. It's all about telling the story with pictures and words, but the pictures are just as important. And the last thing is have fun. It's, yeah. it's, we call it playing. We call it doing a play because it's playing. We're playing at make-believe, at telling a story, at an entertaining people, but it has to be fun. So just have a really, really good time. And just know that Mark and I are on your side. We want you to succeed. We want you to have a good time. We are your friends in this, not your enemies. And um, we're going to judge it on its merits and merits only. So I'm really excited to all the mobile film making people out there, I'm so overjoyed that I'm a part of your community. It's been a revelation in my career and I'm I'm embracing it. And if any of you, you know, want to come and work on my Western for free in New Zealand, if you can get here, I'll let you know when it's happening. Probably not this Tuesday, but maybe the following Friday. <laughs> awesome. I'll have what he said. <laughs> um, one last little thing, Mark, I want you to know something. I, I just want to give a shout out to the rest of the, the judges. Um, Kimberly Hart, who is your, oh, yeah. your partner on the, uh, uh, Mark for the feature films. Oh, uh, uh, she, um, she, um, gladiators. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, yeah. so, uh, n well, n okay. So she's, she's also going to judge the feature films along with you. <laughs> she's on the panel. And oh. she lives in Australia, but she's actually from New Zealand. Good Lord. Amazing. It's frightening, isn't it? <laughs> Dylan, um, could be one day. I've said this all along. Well, why are you quiet, Jed? I'm just, I'm listening to your profound words, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> As soon as you said, I've said this all along, I even got quiet. <laughs> yeah, it's like, wow, there's something coming. I'm pulling it back. Just sit there. I love you. Anyway, moving on. All right. So, uh, Jed, for you, in, yes. in your panel, uh, yeah. you've got a, a few here. You've got Demetrius uh, Witherspoon. Yes. And Nathan Bechtold, from, both of them from Indiana. I've actually met them. Uh, when I was there for the Heartland uh, Film Festival, the shorts, uh, indie shorts Brilliant. Uh, film festival there. And so, and they're wonderful guys. Um, and then also Shola Ayahi, who oh, is, yeah. yep. And yep. she's from Lagos um, in Africa. Well, she yeah. lives in New York um, and she's in, in Lagos. So she splits her time. Yeah. Uh, she's so, an instructor. So there are two of us and four of them. On the short films. Yeah, yeah, well, there's, yeah. Well, so for the short films, yeah, there's a total of one, two, three, four judges, and then two for the feature films. That's right. I like that. I like yeah. that. I do. It yeah. means Jed's got three helpers. I've got one helper. And uh, <laughs> I, I'm helper. Uh, Well, <laughs> you know, let me tell you, there are going to be a lot more short films than, I mean, I don't select more than three tops on of of all the feature films i love you <laughs> <laughs> but they're longer <laughs> so, so how, how, how how many short films Susie? well i, I don't I, know I, my gosh we got so many this year yeah okay. there you go Jed. oh i can't wait for you to look at all of those jd <laughs> like a thousand films no i'm just kidding there's That's no easy. way I Thousand films. I can do that in my lunchtime. I just fast forward to the action books. <laughs> you know what, Susie? That really annoys me. He could do that, and that, and he would make a very, very good choice. Oh. <laughs> you so frustrate me, bro. Oh. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah bro. 
You know so, what? My favorite word here in San Diego. You know what it is? You must no? have heard of this if you know me on Twitter. Oh, Mark is not on Twitter anymore. What is it? No, oh, I miss I, you. Tell us, Susie. What is it? Tacos. <laughs> yeah, true tacos. I love tacos. I actually make great tacos and nachos. Really? Chicken, yeah. Good every. But I love chicken. Sure I am. Yeah. Are they kiwi tacos? Uh, they've got my own. They've got my own special sauce, and they've got things that you probably don't get there. Uh, yeah. You probably would make it with lamb mince, for instance. But we lamb is a big product here because obviously there are six, 20 million sheep here, so we have to do something with them. Um, they just usually end up in that place. Um So yeah, that's. <laughs> There's a fabulous Mexican restaurant in the middle of Nelson that is absolutely, uh, essentially m- Mexican, and it's fabulous. And they make the best tacos. Oh, everything. Oh, no, 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 guys. I'm sorry. There's the best tacos in the whole world are right here in San Diego. I'm so, yeah. I, I'm. I know they are. So <laughs> I, I can't wait I, to taste. I, them. I believe you. Yeah, we do. We can't wait to get out there. AJ, we can't. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I, I, Mark and I have been trying to get to your festival for oh. for the last two two years, um, yeah. three years coming up, and and yeah. I believe Susie that you've told someone at the border that we're not to be trusted because <laughs> <laughs> they simply will not let us into the country. On the border of the universe, it would be yeah, because. Exactly. <laughs> oh yeah, no! Let's not blame things. this on me now. Um, <laughs> I think it's just gonna. There's there's a reason for everything. Yeah, true. So there's a reason why it's being held back, and it's just going to be epic when you guys and and it will be both of you. I'm I'm pretty yeah. sure of that. Yeah, yeah. I I I am going to say I cannot wait to get there. Hey, Jed, I really no, am. I can't wait for you to get there. Either. The two of us getting there and actually um, just catching up with you and actually meeting you firsthand. And in, in, in uh, taking in this wonderful energy and the passion and the commitment that you have, Susie, to this extraordinary phenomenon, which is mobile filmmaking. Oh, you're amazing. Oh, you're awesome. You and, are- and I can't wait to take you out to, uh, to the mountains where I used to live and to Hobbit land. And, and that, that, for me, would be just, just, I could die after that and be happy. <laughs> well, we could. We, we breed hobbits here now in New Zealand, and we, we could actually bring some hobbits with us. Um, breeding stock. Hey, hey yeah. Mark. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, yeah. I've actually got one in the shed at the moment that's um, about, uh, he's due. When is he due? I think he's due Soon about, Soon. Yeah, about, about March, isn't it? Just bet, prior, just post yeah. summer going into autumn. And then, yeah. boom. I've, yep, there comes a hobbit. I mean, I've been trying to do elves, but they're a lot harder to make. Um, they're yeah. they're a bit they're a bit bloody weird. Dwarves yeah. are easy, but no one really wants to hang with dwarves. Yeah, so really um, Martin Freeman though, which really scares me. Yeah, they're all based on Marty. It'll be fine. Yeah. It'll be fine. It'll work out. Well, San Diego hobbits um, they eat tacos. Just yeah. you know, have to have to New say Zealand, that. New Zealand New Zealand hobbits eat anything. They'll eat anything. They're very hard. <laughs> <laughs> I actually feed mine with kumara. Which is sweet potato, which yeah. is beautiful. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I just that. I feed my I feed my gravel just gravel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, listen here, listeners. If you are in San Diego, <laughs> watch out because if Jed and Mark and I walk into my favorite uh, Mexican food restaurants to have tacos, just clear the way. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be. It's on. It's it all. is. Yeah. You guys rock. All right, say to say goodbye to our listeners. Kakite. Yeah, kakite, and um, thank you so much, guys and uh, gals, for all of your support uh, for Susie and for mobile filmmaking. Um, I can assure you that um, my brother and I, and I do refer to him as a brother, uh, Jed and I, are just so lucky. Uh, with what we've been able to do in mobile we have been. And, um, yeah, as we would say in Kuzdal, because Mark and I are both, you know, we both practice the Kuzdal faith, feel the fire of the dwarves and let it burn oh away all your troubles. Um, oh. Yeah. 
That's I know. Scary. I just had, I had to put it in there. Oh, it's a bit. Oh, it's a bit WK. Oh, because a bit WK, yeah. So, um, yeah, be well, be safe, make sure you. I'm gonna have to other. Google all this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, love you, bro. Love you. Yeah, you too. Bro. Love you, Mac. Thank you, love Susie. You. Thank, Thank you, so you guys. Thank you. Thank you.